Muharram, step on our right foot entering into the holy month of Muharram until we end onto the 12th month of Zul Hijjah and the realities of Surat Al Kawthar, the realities of Surat Al Yusuf salam. And that the immensity of this journey and that it's a circle. We journey, it ends at the 12th month and your months are 12, not 13 because they'll come out with the fitna and saying it's 13 months and four of which are holy. 12 has a significant reality and we end at the 12th month by the power of nine and the sultanate of nine and that's the Surat Al Kawthar. That should be a sign for us that the Hajj is a time in which Allah will complete the favours upon the servant and the rituals that they perform within the Hajj are a significance in every aspect of their life. If they understand it, they grasp it, they live by it and you have the book there Ali, Secrets of Hajj. They would read about it so that they can learn the reality, absorb themselves within that reality and it's an everyday, everyday aspect of our life. It's not one ticket, once a year we'll go and, and uh, make a hajj, means that that reality is important for us. That's okay, he'll find it, sit down, don't worry. That reality then is an importance for us. And all of Hajj and all its rituals, its pinnacle, its secret is Arafah, the day of gathering. On Jabal Rahmah, on a mountain of mercy, Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, Prophet Abraham was commanded to sacrifice his son, Sayyidina Ismail salam. the secrets of the realities of Hajj. So alhamdulillah all of these teachings in the book so that we understand our life because Muharram is not Hajj one time, Muharram now begins the journey again until we leave this world. We are in a continuous journey and a continuous pilgrimage for every year we should be growing. Growing in our understanding, growing in our, in our ability and our taqwa, consciousness and our purity and cleanliness. All of Hajj, its pinnacle, its reality is Arafah. The gathering on the mountain of Rahmah in which Sayyidina Ibrahim was commanded to sacrifice his son Sayyidina Ismail salam. And we said this year we would start with that because by the time we talk about that we'd be too close to Eid for people to understand that the summation of that event of Arafah is that Sayyidina Ibrahim living a life of immense generosity and a Khalil, the friend of Allah means the intimacy of that relationship with the Divine, the Presence in which the best of character, generous of character, nobleness of character, that continuous life of generosity in which even the angels were coming to test Sayyidina Ibrahim salam, and many stories and, and beautific events of the generosity and an event between Sayyidina Jibreel and Sayyidina Ibrahim testing his generosity means that a life of continuous giving for Allah serving for Allah And on this day he has a dream in which to sacrifice his only son and that all his life he prayed for son to inherit his way with all that he established. And all he did for Allah and all he gave for the Divine, the Presence and the depth of submission of what Allah wants is that you gave 
and your generosity was your property. And we talked the night before is that when people give and their hands tremble but the reality is that it was not yours to give. If you think that what you have is yours then the, the reality of Islam hasn't set in within your heart. Everything is owned by Allah, you are a mere custodian. It's not your house, it's Allah's house, He let you to live in it. It's not your body, it's Allah's body, He let you to use it. Taslim and submission is to submit to Allah that He is the owner of everything, Malikul Mulk and I own nothing. And my life was to submit, submit to what? That I own nothing and that Allah owns everything. It's not your family to do with it what you want, not your body to do with it what you want. Everything that been given to you has been given in trust. So we are entrusted and that's why the Muslims if they reach to being and reality of Islam they realize that I've been entrusted with all of this and my life is to submit to that trust and be a good custodian of that trust in which I take my portion and the rest belongs to the nation. And as a result you have a very powerful nation and that we are our brother's keeper, we are responsible to take care of one, of an one another. So it means that the immensity of that generosity and the immensity of Islam, the Sayyidina Ibrahim is coming and Allah teaching that you gave, you gave but you gave property. And this reality has to be tested and really you didn't give it but you returned what was entrusted to you. And that's what we talked last night that when you give a gift it's amanat that I'm returning what was entrusted to me on the day of promises that I promised Allah that I would give it back to you and that I would give it in the way of Allah and that I would raise my children in Islam and that I would submit myself. All of it was, rest, was given to us, recited to us and we say, bala in Allah's presence and then it was written on your DNA. It's in the code of your existence and your wujud. Then Allah is testing Sayyidina Ibrahim and said, okay you gave but now I want you to self-sacrifice. Sacrifice that which is dearest to you. Sacrifice this son that you have been praying for. Allah is going to test, I'm going to test you. Qulina salati wa ahnu suqi wa ahma yahya wa ahma mahdi lillahi rabbil alameen. And we're going to test you like those who came before you with your life, your family, your property. Everything is on the table with Allah there's no like, no, 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 not these Ya Rabbi. But Allah says, I don't test you beyond your ability. Sayyidina Ibrahim has a huge station, alayhi salam. Comes to him that you have to sacrifice Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. Says, no, this, this can't be true. Sleeps. Again the dream comes, the sharat comes. Ya Sayyidina Ibrahim you have to sacrifice Ismail, no this can't be true, I gave everything not this. Third time the dream comes and he understands now this is a command from Allah Means that's Islam because we have Islam, Iman wal Maqam al-Ihsan. Islam is not just Iman, it's not just Islam. Islam is actually in three, Islam, Iman wal Maqam al-Ihsan. That represents Islam, that your Islam has to be with the purity of a Prophet of Allah and that which He commands has to be committed to, that you can't not submit 
your body. Third and final time acknowledges this is from Allah and awaken, I have to get up. Goes to his child, very young Sayyidina Ismail that, come with me, i am been commanded something, just come with me. And with all the grief, all the sadness in life he takes his son and now begins moving towards the Arafah. But for us he comes to our, our life and describes that your submission has to be based on these characteristics of generosity and giving, good characteristics to have that love and the ishq of Allah And if our physicality is in a process of submission and we're trying our best to keep the purity of our submission, Allah is going to test us. And that's why on this Arafah they have three jamarats on Hajj. These are three pillars in which we're supposed to throw stones. The first one was related to Sayyidina Ibrahim and the dream. The first shaitan is that we'll stop your Islam. All asking you, don't uh, ignore it, don't worry. Whatever Allah is asking for you, we ignore it. Whatever comes to your heart doing it, no, we ignore it. Whatever you're supposed to be doing in Allah's way, we ignore it. And that's why when we go for Hajj, that first jamarat, that first shaitan, we're throwing these 21 pebbles from the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem and asking, Ya Rabbi, that perfect my Islam because shaitan is blocking at everything I'm trying to do. So the, this first level of Islam has a devil that has to be defeated, that, that stops us from what Allah is commanding within our heart. And know that whatever Allah is commanding has to be done, has to be committed to and He's not commanding us like the Prophets. But they're giving from the highest example that they're not like kings in which they have a leisurely life but a life in which they had immense sacrifice and immense struggle and that you too can struggle in the way of Allah and we're all struggling with struggling. The second jamarat on this way of Arafah, the devil says, okay I can't move Sayyidina Ibrahim, I go to Sitna Hagar his wife and goes to Sayyidina Hagar and says, do you know where Sayyidina Ibrahim now is taking Sayyidina Ismail? where Abraham is taking Ismail and Sidna Hagar began to spit on him. Billah, that, I know you, who you are, you're a devil and cast him out and that this is a righteous man, a pious man. And if this is what he has been commanded, then you find me to be patient with it. Means that Sidna Hagar represents the purity of a soul, and that our Islam is never going to be perfected if we don't reach a level of iman in which our soul is committed to our journey as well. And that every time we're being attacked our soul is giving us support that don't quit. So I mean Sidna Hagar represents the feminine and the perfection of ikhlas and sincerity. That when that soul has a trust in the body and sticks firm to the body, they can fight the devil that's coming towards their faith. But if your body's Islam is not correct and it's like all over the place, your soul has no trust in you. Your soul looks to you and says, no way. 
Your Islam is not submitting to Allah and therefore you have a, an inner fight and struggle at all times because the soul knows what's right and says, what you're doing is not right. The soul knows what Allah wants and says, what you're saying is not what Allah wants. So until the soul feels that the body is in taslim, it will not support you. So then you have continuous battle. That's why the tariqahs come to teach the love of Prophet because what is the station of faith? Because she represents iman because iman is at the soul, it's the world of light. Why does she have iman? Because she had an overwhelming love for Sayyidina Ibrahim and trusted that this is a Nabiullah, this is somebody who submits to Allah and no doubt I submit to him. And the perfection of that relationship of the soul and the body is what brings us into the perfection and our ability to fight shaitan. So the soul knows when the body is like, no you're not really doing it right, of course I'm not going to listen to you. And that's why the turuqs come to guide. They're not guiding the Islam and the body only, those are the external imams at the masjid. They give you khutbah, Friday's over, get out. I don't care if you liked it, you listened to it, you didn't listen to it. I just told you something about Islam, maybe hopefully you're lucky you got a little bit of fiqr, not too much, it make you confused. But there's no tazkiyah, there's no cleansing, there's no zikr, there's no majlis and associations and halaqahs of teachings. So you can't train one without the other. You can't have an association where it's just the, the body. Just the mind, just the mind, just the mind the, because the soul is saying, I don't trust you. What do you think you know? I didn't get any energy from it, I didn't get any understanding from it. The turuqs come because it's a heavenly path. Not only they're teaching, they're doing the zikr, they're doing all their practices. They're not going out making tabliq and running around on the streets. First tabliq to yourself before you teach anyone else. You'll be in danger of hypocrisy, right? We don't go put out and so knock on people's doors, hey do this, do that, out of Maruf bin Mulhan, or is it tell people uh, what they're doing wrong? Are you kidding me? Don't tell anyone anything that they're doing wrong until you fix all your wrongs. Otherwise you have a big sign of hypocrisy over your head. Tariqahs don't let you talk to anyone, guide anyone. Argue with anyone, fight yourself. If you could battle and win yourself, you get a big trophy from Allah Not you battle and bother other people, go to their door and say, come with me to the mosque, do like this, do like that. It's a path of hypocrisy. The only, only path is for myself. I don't protest on the street. Well, protest in your sajjad when you're on your carpet, protest against yourself that shaitan has overtaken me Ya Rabbi. I'm completely overtaken by shaitan, send somebody to throw rocks at me, <laughs> right? Why well, they want to protest everybody? Means this is the tariqah that they come, they do the zikr, they give the halaqah, they, they teach about the muhabbat and the associations, these are now energies coming to the soul. So the soul is getting its food, they say feeding yourself is your, for your body, feeding someone else is for your soul. The soul needs something for yaqeen, the body needs something for yaqeen and they have to be given together. There has to be a training, a guidance, a majlis and zikr, practices and food for the soul and practices and food for the body to come into taslim, into submission. As a result the bodies are being disciplined, they're hearing the way of discipline, they learn manners, talk like this, don't talk like this, sit like this, don't sit like that. You go to places and the people put their feet at you. In our culture the heel of your foot is extremely rude. So you have to teach a discipline. There's not a barnyard, it's from the heavens and the heavens are filled with rules.
Why? To discipline the body. So the body has an immense discipline, it's clean like an army, soldiers for heavens, they're called spiritual warriors in which their character futuwa, Imam Ali Salam, the Imam of that reality, come teach futuwa how to be chivalrous, noble knights from Allah's heavenly kingdom in which their physicalities are very noble, very righteous, very clean. At the same time their souls have been fed. So it becomes like Sidna Hagar, completely I'm trusting my body. My body is under the tarbiyah of these shaykhs, under the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and I'm with him. If that happens that, shaykh, that second shaitan is defeated and that's the the inner marriage where Allah describes the different ranks of marriage, that there's a marriage of which you don't know, means the marriage of your own soul and body. That your soul wants to be married to you, wants to listen to you but doesn't trust in what you're choosing because the soul can't be fooled, the body is fooled, not the soul. The soul is a nur and a light from Allah's oceans of reality. It looks straight through and says, mm, it's not going to fly, you can fool them but you're not fooling me. But when the soul feels that what you're doing is correct and that you are struggling against yourself, then Sidna Hagar comes and reminds us that she spit on shaitan, said, so, I know what you're trying to do, I'm not going to intervene on, on his mission for Allah and has an immense reality for us. So Islam, Iman. And then now reaching towards Maqam al-Ihsan in which Sayyidina Ismail has to be sacrificed. So his body and his Islam is taking the command of Allah because Islam is not easy, I have to do that, I have to sacrifice that, I don't go to bars anymore, I don't go to clubs anymore, I don't do all these things anymore. So people struggle, don't smoke anymore, don't do any of these bad things anymore. And as they're moving towards that reality, their soul when it believes in them says, yes I'm with you and we're going to struggle together. And as a result they're defeating that second shaitan and they take with them a beautific child. And Sayyidina Ismail represents the beautific reality of Maqam al-Ihsan. If you struggle with your body, and you do your zikr and your practices and your khidmat and your service, you're also fed your soul, your soul is in taslim and with you on your journey. You have a peace, not like a house that's like a jahannam where everyone's fighting in it, but your inner is like a house like that, you're all fighting inside. But when everything is in taslim, it's all submitting inside. Your soul is not struggling with you because it's, it's radi, it's, it's, what's radi? It's content with you, trusts in you. And then took for Sayyidina Ismail still shaking and scared, we have to go up to this mountain. I have been ordered something and now the child reveals his reality. That I know what you've been commanded to do. And inshaAllah you find me to be peaceful and patient with Allah's command. Why? Because Maqam al-Ihsan is showing that it's much higher than Islam. That Sayyidina Ibrahim is sacrificing something of his that he owns, his child, a possession. But Sayyidina Ismail Salam is teaching, no, what I represent of Maqam al-Ihsan is that I'm willing to sacrifice myself for Allah You're sacrificing property, I'm sacrificing myself, inshaAllah you find me to be patient with what Allah has commanded. And only because Sayyidina Ismail Salam said those words, it gave a faith and trust to his heart. 
each thing is something to meditate on. So we say these things in, you know, 30 minute sound bites, but this is our life's journey. For Sayyidina Ismail to speak to him that, you find me to be patient, saying, I know what you're doing, Allah already revealed that to me. And I'm more patient than you because I'm the one who's going to be passing away today and willing to sacrifice myself for my Lord Most High. And you're scared because you're sacrificing property. As a result of his yaqeen and the reality of his maqam al-ihsan and the reality of his iman, his wife, what happened? He's able to go to the mountain. And Allah giving for us an understanding that all this path is how you're going to succeed. When you struggle with yourself and you attend the zikrs and the practices and, and be generous and charitable, give your time of service, you've empowered your soul. Your soul now is dressing with your body and your Islam and your Iman are now flourishing within you. As a result of the two coming together what happens when the man and the woman come together? They give birth to Maqam al-Ihsan, they give birth to Maqam al-Ihsan. So it means this station of excellence and moral excellence is born only by the perfection of their body and soul. That's why if they don't attend zikr and they don't do spiritual practices there is no iman. What are they doing to, to bring light into their heart? Iman is not something that you declare, I have faith. No, you don't have faith, you merely accepted Islam. Iman is to love Prophet more than you love yourself. And it's a light and it's an experience in which you will witness the light enter the heart. And you'll know at that time you're lit, your heart is lit. And with that Islam and the struggling of your Iman, what happens? Allah grant you a child and he's called Maqam al-Ihsan. Sayyidina Ismail represents Prophet because now the lineage of Muhammadun Rasulullah begins to appear on this earth. And that lineage establishes itself with self-sacrifice, giving money is not good for us. They don't deem it as anything, give yourself is what Allah wants. Means the lineage of Sayyidina Ismail is coming and teaching, no, 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 this station of Muhammadun Rasulullah is a nation in which they will sacrifice themselves within a second for Allah Their love for Allah and love for Sayyidina Muhammad is so immense that it cannot be understood by humanity because it's not something from this earth, it's a gift from the heavens. And that was the characteristic with the holy companions, 124,000 Sahabi that would have died with a blink of an eye in any battle that Prophet would have asked of them to struggle in the way of Allah then gave to them that the greatest struggle will be struggle against yourself. So means then how can a nation with that much love not willing to struggle against themselves? That's the immensity, that's the greatest battle. Not to attacking of other people but fight yourself. We're a nation of self-sacrifice, not a, a nation only gives money. But what Allah wanted from the reality of Sayyidina Ismail in our life is that sacrifice yourself. Look to yourself when you're sitting and meditating, Ya Rabbi please my character is bad, my anger is bad, all these different things. I don't need to vindicate myself with people. I don't need to enter into an argument to prove I'm right. I need to sacrifice myself at that time. Come out as the loser of that discussion by not saying a single word. You don't have to win, you have to sacrifice yourself, not to harm yourself, these things the videos watch. But lose intentionally, stop arguing, give up. 
So all these people say, oh I want to I want to I want to go here and struggle in the way of Allah oh, stop smoking that's enough for you. Mawlana Shaykh would always say right take one bad character give that up for Allah's sake instead of talking big about struggling in, in, in big wars and these battles are coming. Take a, a real battle in your life, stop one bad characteristic for the sake of Allah I won't do it anymore, Ya Rabbi I don't want to do it, I want to drop that bad characteristic. And that's what Maqam al Ihsan was teaching Sayyidina Ibrahim, you find me to be patient with what Allah has commanded for you. As a result, otherwise he could have had a horrific journey. As soon as he's going up the hill his wife come out and start attacking him, chasing him, throwing rocks at him. Good Lord he would have never made it five feet and the kid screaming the whole time. <laughs> like you see kids on the airplane, wow scream the whole trip here, <laughs> the whole trip, two hours. Yeah. It could have been upside down for Sayyidina Ibrahim but he gives to us an experience that, look this is all a spiritual path, this is all a reality. That when my struggle is correct and I'm feeding my soul and my soul feels secure with me and who I am and what I'm trying to guide myself, Allah in your struggle will give birth to an inner reality which we call Maqam al Ihsan. And that's the yaqeen and the perfection in your character and it becomes a voice of clarity to you. That maqam al is a, is a beatific whispering in your consciousness. It's very much real Sayyidina Ismail's light in you, will begin to teach you, do what Allah asked, don't worry, don't be scared, do it. And it's not something bad and harmful. But it tells you to have faith, that's why we operate differently than other people. Eight years ago we wanted to start a mawlid. They said, don't do that because it's not going to be profitable and you don't know if anyone's going to come. The inner voice said, don't worry about if nobody comes, it's not your business. You do it for the sake of love and that's all you have to do and that's your responsibility. Whom Allah sends is, that's Allah's business if Allah doesn't want to send anybody. That's the inner voice of yaqeen, we operate completely differently. We don't ha wait for boards and committees to tell us what to do. It's the inner consciousness that says, this is what Allah wants, you do it and don't worry about the rest. Move into that area, even the whole world wants to come against you from moving into that, you move, don't you worry about anything else. So it's the inner voice of perfection that begins to guard and guide the servant like a, a speaking angel to you that keeps perfecting your faith, go, don't worry, you go. Otherwise imagine taking your isharat from people which was against Prophet right? Because Allah was telling and revealing companions, don't say, listen to me to Prophet because his ears are only for Allah but unzur halana, that look at us, gaze upon us, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem. So Mr. Adab was never to say, Prophet please can you listen to me for a moment? No, because his ears are only for Allah But you say that unzur halana, that please if you gaze upon me for a moment, your nazar is what I'm in need of. We're teaching an immense reality. That the inner voice and the inner perfection when these stations open becomes the inner guidance, the inner shaykh that is guiding with clarity that Allah wants this and that your success or not success is not your business and you move and do it. So then what is Arafah? It's the whole of all the practices. It's the whole of our religion that our life at every moment is walking up Jabbar Rahmah. At every moment and at every station is your Islam and your body still submitting? Is your soul and your faith secure? 
Because if it's wishy-washy, must something in your Islam is, is scaring your soul and the two are not agreeing anymore. That has to be repaired. And when those are in perfect harmony, your maqam al ihsan begins to come to life, is born. And that inner perfection then becomes the thing and the, the voice and the reality and the push within the heart that is guiding that servant. And to reach towards that reality, this Jabbar Rahmah, then what Allah granted when He was about to bring Sayyidina Ismail to be sacrificed and was right about to do the zabiyya and the knife became dull, Allah sent Sayyidina Jibreel with a ram. And Allah reveals that, don't touch the child because this is Muhammadun Rasulullah's light now coming through the, the path of Sayyidina Ismail salam. But we're granting that whole reality through this qurban. That whatever you were supposed to accomplish by this level of submission, by this level of sacrifice, we granted him a tremendous sacrifice. Means the qurban is the pinnacle of the whole of Hajj. And the whole year's pilgrimage is going to have significance on that qurban. So 12 months of moving into this reality, 12 months of journeying towards Allah's oceans of rahmah and mercy, 12 months of trying to accomplish this maqam al-iman, well maqam al-islam, maqam al-iman, maqam al-ihsan and perfection, Allah gave to the nation an immense gift that I give to you this qurban and it's tremendous in its ability to take away all your deficiencies. Because we said Allah gave this whole game rigged for us. He made the game in favour for us to be victorious because He loves Prophet right? Because He wants the Muhammadan nation to be immensely shining. So the game is rigged in our favour. Every time you do a sin, Allah said, I give one. So you got one negative. Well, if you know that, what Prophet gave to us? Sadaqah. So even you give five dollars sadaqah, you got ten points that day. You know you lost one point, but Allah just gave you ten points because hasanat is ten, sayyat is one. So that you're, you're always nine points up. If you did two sins, Go do two goods. Now you got 20 points and two down. So now you're up what? 18. That's why the concept of sadaqah. So why people say, why do you have to do sadaqah every day? Well because you're doing sins every day. So you don't want that day to be negative five only on your account. If you did 10 sins or 20 sins and you have just negative 20, negative 20, negative 20, then you can see at the end of the week you're going to have problems. But Allah gave and rigged the game in our favour, go do something good, give a hamburger to somebody and do it five times that day if you did something wrong. Give a sadaqah five times, do something of a good, I'll give you ten points for it. So that means in our life is continuously Allah giving us an ability to sleep at night with a positive account. But it's in your hands, why you don't do it? These are the rahmah when Allah described Prophet I would not have sent him, I don't like your earth, I don't like your people, but that he's a mercy. Why well, people are not nice now, look at the internet and say, these are the people that Allah was trying to save. Say, yeah, but I would not have sent him. It starts with a negation, wa ma arsalnaka, I would not have sent. But the presence and the reality of Prophet and the virtues of his nation are a mercy for all creation. Oh, anyone comes into this nation is given this gift. Anyone who comes into Islam, every sin you do is one, every good you do is ten. Every night you go into positive accounts. You understood the system, you play the system. You know what you did bad that day, then give your sadaqah and give it ding, ding, ding three times. Then you go 
30. Korban is then the finale for the year. That everything where we came wrong from what Allah commanded of our Islam, commanded of our, our Iman and where we didn't achieve of Maqam al Ihsan, we didn't achieve the reality of Sayyidina Ismail Salam. Allah grants its lights with the holy Qurban. So as soon as they perform the Qurban, Allah takes what you didn't achieve because Allah wants the best for us. Prophet wants the best for us. What we didn't achieve of what they had wanted us to achieve that year but because shaitan and the nafs got involved, Allah washes that with the Qurban and takes the sayat of the servant, takes it with the Qurban and is taken away. And that's why you say after Hajj everyone's like a newborn child, they're all pure and clean. That at every moment Allah is cleansing the nation and that's why the hadith that your nation doesn't stop sinning and I don't stop forgiving them. Means that at everywhere we look Allah's immense rahmah and mercy is dressing the nation. So then people think that Qurban, oh I don't have to do it this year because they don't understand the significance and the Qurban can be to the extent of what somebody has in life. They can do the animal, if they can't do the animal they can <coughs> make a Qurban on a chicken and if they don't have even the means to get a chicken, get an egg, go to your backyard and say, Bismillah Allahu Akbar and the egg is your Qurban. Anything in the way of Allah is never lost. Nothing is lost. Give a hamburger, make a sandwich, give out the sandwich for the sake of people. Say, Ya Rabbi this is all I have as an ability, grant me from the lights of this Qurban and not, not a deed or an action is wasted in Allah's way. The immensity of its rahmah and the immense love that Allah has for Sayyidina Muhammad Ya Rabbi from Ummatul Muhammad let me to be achieving. Let me not to be disgraced on the Day of Judgment with my bad actions. For the sake of the love of Prophet perfect me and purify me. And no doubt Allah because of that love to wash and to cleanse the nation so that they can shine on a day when the, all other nations will see that, what's this nation that's shining like sunshine? Why is their light so luminous and, and glowing? Because at every opportunity Allah gave the nation immense blessings, immense dressings, immense sources of lights. We pray that Allah dress us, bless us from these immense 10 days and that we know we're falling short that Allah grant us from the immensity of the qurbans to be accepted and Allah take away all the bad characteristics and that He complete His beatific ni'mat upon our souls inshaAllah, our family, our children and our communities. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.